Today I'll be spending 100 hours in an alternate Pokemon dimension where every single Pokemon has a type swap and a totally new design that will absolutely shock you with how great they look. On top of that, this isn't the Kanto region you're used to. There will be added locations and all the routes and towns have been scrambled around so that they don't look the same anymore. The name of the game is Pokemon Altered with a gun and as the name implies, it's also way harder than the regular Altered. In these 100 hours, I want to capture 10 shiny Pokemon because these shiny odds are increased. I want to get the coolest Pokemon to level 100. I want to capture all 386 new Pokemon. And lastly, I want to complete the post game and become champion for a second time because that's when the fight gets really challenging. Before we get into it, let me know which Pokemon you would give a new regional form in the comments down below. And if you're actually going to design it as well, I would love to see it on Twitter. If you could smash 9,999 likes, that would be epic. And also don't forget to subscribe because I'm still trying to hit 500k by the end of the year. With all of that out of the way, let's jump into the portal and see what this new dimension looks like. Since we're in an alternate dimension, I felt like this was a very fitting name for our rival. Nothing much changes until we get to the table of the professor and pick our starter. Here we can pick between the ground type Chikoride, the steel type Atomic Will, or the ice type Explodile. It definitely wasn't easy to pick between these three cuties, and you all know how much I love Totodile, but I had to go for Atomic Will. It's by far the best designed one, and steel is always going to be overpowered. Except in our very first battle against our rival, because I only have flash. Flash and Explosion as our attacking moves. Flash has 20 base power in this game and is a steel type move, but that still makes it trash. And when I use Explosion, I just blow myself up, which also makes me lose. So this loss was kind of inevitable, and so with our loss in our bank, I moved on to the next city, which is not Viridian City, it's this little town that's been added in, with a couple of abandoned houses where you can find some useful items like the XP share, and I also picked up Professor Oak's package and brought it back to get myself my set of balls. I then headed back to round 1, and you are not going to believe it, my very first encounter here was a shiny mermander a beautiful red water type that i will pick up immediately and add to the team let's hope brock's rock types are still the same so that we can immediately use this little guy i also grabbed iv who's actually the secret 19th type of altered the question mark type it has no weaknesses but it also can hit anything for super effective damage but it is very interesting only a couple of pokemon have this typing and i think this fits ev perfectly i also captured the best doggo Poo Cheever, which is now a fairy type, and I love that it's now based on a golden retriever. I also captured the grass type Fertile and everything else on this route, and then headed over to the next one where I'm ready to grab revenge on my rival for humiliating me in the lab. And I might have gone in a little bit under level, but his poison type Yugdo could stand no chance against Tommy. But I also wanted to grind up Ivy a little bit, so I swapped it out in the end and finished it off with a couple of tackles. He seems to have swapped out his Chikorita for a Fertile, which is a little bit weird, but Beacon was able to pick all the grass of its shell and win me the battle. Before I can even reach the Pokemon Center, I end up grabbing a dark type Sneeko and a Boxeran that just looked very funny to me. It just looks like a dog with his head stuck in a box. I then went to check out the newly upgraded Pokemon Center. They added some shops here as well as the Move the Leader, Move Reminder, and the Nicknamer. But also a space all the way in the back where you can fight substitutes for XP. They definitely don't give as much XP as Chances or Blissies, but it's a really nice way to level up. Oh, and their catch rate is really high because I tried to capture one and it seems to almost be impossible with just Pokeballs. I also found out that these guys can be shiny and they're really easy to find for some reason. I couldn't capture them so they were so close yet so far away from me. And once I was done, I grabbed every single Pokemon in this area and went to Viridian Forest. Here I grabbed a little Itsy Bitsy Spider, Shrubarak, a Grass Dark type, the Grass type Secola, the Grass Psychic type Ladybark, the Grass Electric type Monocoth, and by far my favorite Stingar the Bug Poison type. He just reminds me so much of Spider-Man. And even though I haven't played the new Spider-Man 2 yet, I'm going to play it just because of this guy. I also found Q-Blade and Malvinus, but another shiny appeared in the forest for me, the Poison Ghost type Shroomass. But the shinies don't even stop there. Piter Puff, another thing that reminds me of Spider-Man, also popped up straight after. And this brings us up to three shinies capped.
captured already. I feel like 10 might have not been enough, but maybe from now on, they'll just stop appearing. Speaking of that, my luck in battle also seems to have disappeared. Because now in some areas, they've added boss trainers that will make your life miserable. And this time, it was Bug Maniac Miguel. I was a little bit underleveled on my very first attempt, so I went back to grind up and return. This time, my buffed Stingar was able to take down Faraz, but Ugnaut countered me out of here. Piderpuff Girl was able to eat it up with bites, and Tommy deal with Be Gone just by spamming Flash and that lowered its accuracy enough to make it legally blind and miss every single one of its moves. The last few Pokemon were pushovers, and with that we can pick our very first fossil, or I guess we can just pick both of them up, and make our way out of the forest into Pewter City. But the gym seems to be missing as well, and after entering the cave where the gym supposed to be, I find a couple of trainers and some grass patches. So I destroyed all the humans and captured Mandiwag, Cedipol, Giotl, and the Cram de la Cram, Sproutar, and Ujamer. Ujamer is actually one of the most broken Pokemon ever. It's the opposite of Whalmer, making it super tiny, but it's also got the Wonder Guard ability on top of a bug dark typing. So even though its face might look silly, this thing will destroy your entire team. I evolved Mermander in Mermelion and Beacon into Egg on, and then at the end of the cave, I finally found Brock. With 7 hours and 47 minutes on the clock and 33 Pokemon in my Pokedex, I challenged the Big Hunk. He starts out with a Rock-type Carvana and an Icy Coon. If Icy Coon is anything like Cass or Silcoon, I'm just going to keep that thing alive. So I took out the Carvana first with Piderpuff and Stingar. Icy Coon took out Piderpuff, so I brought in Suka, and we once again doubled up on the incoming Magmar until it dies. And Senko was ready to wipe us out just like it did with the dinosaurs. So what did we do? We took both it and Icy Coon down in the same turn. The last two Pokemon were Liquitong and Catapoink. And while Catapoink took out Stingar, it actually got poisoned by my Poison Point ability as I brought in Gato to Shrew Mass. It used a full heal, but with a Bubble Beam from Suka, it was absolutely no problem to take it down, and Liquitung fell to Bullet Seed straight after. First gym badge is mine. So I headed to route number 3, which has now been changed into a snowy-type route, and so we find a ground-type Dolly Pier, but also Fantasite, and something you would probably love to eat right now, pop it. God, please save this little thing from my hunger. I took my Pidgey out of the fridge, grabbed two more farm animals, and captured my fourth shiny Fantasite. Six more to go. We reach Mount Moon, and once again it looks very different, and we find a Rubble Dump here. And you're never going to believe it, our fifth shiny, Starite. I love that it's a gold plate now, but honestly, they can slow it down with the shinies a bit. I also found the poison type Garrel, the fire ground type Pickle, and the holy bible. How they managed to turn Shelter into this, I don't know, but it's hilarious. I also make a big mistake by killing a shiny Rubbledum, and after grabbing everything else I could grab, including a bucket, I finally managed to get myself out of there into Cerulean City, who is now surrounded by water and is actually built upon water, which I I love it gives such a nice aesthetic and it reminds me a lot of Pacific Town and the Hoenn region. Before we take on Misty, I decide to do a ton of evolutions by grinding up in the Pokemon Center. Some of the notable ones were Ignisaur, who grew a volcano on its back. My dog just found a bigger box to hide in. One of Ivy's Ivolutions turns out to be a steel type that's also a light bulb. That gave me the brilliant idea to just show you all of my evolutions at once, so here you go. With that, we're now at 16 hours and 29 minutes, but also a Pokedex total of 72. So let's show Misty what we're all about here. We take out Elix the very first turn by bombarding it with grass and leaves, while we keep Ebi alive. Sokern comes in, and Ebi actually goes for a flamethrower. Why does this thing have it? I don't know. But both it and that bucket on wheels has to go. We do some major damage on Sokern and Ebi, but they take both of our team members down, and we're forced to bring in Ledianch and Carbold, who can Mega Drain and Thunderfang to bring out Tartler and Yugduck. They take one of my team members out with Poison Tail, but I bring in Rootortle to turn after, and their water type Stantler stands no chance against Thunderfang. Gulfin is the last Pokemon they can bring in, so Rootortle finishes it off with Bullet Seed, and with two against one, this is an easy win for us, second gym magic wired onto Nugget Bridge. And since we 
just defeated Misty, our rival is nothing, so we throw him off that bridge and then cross it ourselves to find a new area of Pokemon for us to catch. Here we grab Vineup, the grass type that just fused with a Tangela. We also got attacked by some angry smart mutes, captured the baby of Zapdos, a bunch of cables, and a Plasby, but our favorite on this route was by far Zigzagrub. I think it might actually be in my top 5 favorite Fakemon in this video, but let me know what your favorite Pokemon was in the comments down below. We go to Bill's house and he seems to have turned into a Pokemon that nobody's ever seen before. Why is it even in this universe? I don't know. But we quickly turn him back before he breaks the space-time continuum and as a reward we get the drown on a boat. We go to round 4 and grab everything there including a Farfisted with a literal carrot on its back. And then we head through the underground path to reach route 6 and here there are so many amazing and cool Puppers. Here we find Kindlike and Iolithe, fire and electric types respectively, but they've swapped around. And if they weren't the bestest of boys already, we also found both of their shiny forms here, bringing our total up to 7. We also found a Relicanth with legs, which is a little bit disturbing. And after reaching Vermilion, I went straight to Diglett's cave, but there is no Diglett's here. Instead, we have the terrifying Lithib that will swallow you whole and never let you go. But also Crab Beach, Excavite, Sickler, Icy Coon, and then we went outside to grab a Toy Horse, a Mankey that is now an Anki, but it's still angry, so I don't get the point, but also Drill Duo and my spirit animal Ampalm. I would for sure go to the beach with this guy and chill there days upon days. It's finally time to go to the big cruise ship and beat up our rival once again. He's got a good shiny pupper of his own, so we accelerate that with our Carvana, and the rest of his team just falls to Ujamur because they can't touch him. Him. Thank God for Wonder Guard. The HM sadly enough haven't been removed in this new dimension, so we teach our boys cut and go to Lieutenant Surge. Hopefully he doesn't start a new war after we whoop his ass. Lieutenant Surge starts off with a Blitzus and a Linode. Both electric times, but one of them is fire and the other one's bug. So I end up using Magnitude with Pikachu and Ujamur just hits Linode for some neutral damage. But because this is quad effective, Blitzus falls in the very first turn. He brings in Drama for the 100 IQ move, he takes out Ujamur with a gust. I bring in Sedimitang and try to hit the Drama with Santum, but it has Levitate. So I basically wasted the turn while Pikachu went down. The next turn, however, I'm able to take out the Linode and bring in Excaviper and Drill Duo. Drill Duo doesn't take long to go down once they bring in Tilleroth, so I bring in Beautistall, and three of the last four Pokemon happen to be weak to Icy Wind, so after taking the first two out, Fearold and Party Crash crashed shortly after. Three gym badges are now mine, on to capture some more Pokemon. Starting out with a question mark Diglett, who is also the question mark typing. But we also get a Goomba from Mario, a Dark type Volstix, Lyshanita, and finally Clefair. We then move over to just before Rook Tunnel and grab our eighth shiny Pokemon. A cyan looking Steelu, but I bet you can't make a code out of this guy. So instead, we'll just add it to our total, and that means we only need two more shinies. We also grab an air balloon, a party crow, and the coolest cat ever, which just reminds me of my very own cats. We then enter the deep and dark cave that is Rock Tunnel, where everybody always gets stuck but we just capture every Pokemon here and evolve our Drill Duo into a Drill Drio and with him we can just dig a hole in the wall and head straight to Pokemon Tower. But the scariest thing here were not the Pokemon, it was the face of our rival as he emerged from darkness. An attack move is Zenchoke, but it turns out Drill Drio is a pretty good counter to it. With a smart strike, it goes down and his starter falls by using Peck two times. Pelistorm is no longer a toilet bird, he's now a toilet cloud. With Beautistall, we can still overpower it by using Blizzard, and Snorlax has definitely seen better days. That hand is ready to give me a good smackin', but our Blizzard and Ancient Power does manage to finish it off. And even though his last Pokemon was a Chance Soul, which is supposed to bring him luck, he seems to have run out as a Blizzard one-shots it and blasts him out of the Pokemon Tower. On the next round, we grab our very own Chance Soul, as well as a Nut, a little owl under a blanket, and a Lotat that's on fire. I then enter the underground path that normally leads you to Celadon City, but here there was a special pathway that led you to a forest. In the forest I ended up capturing a Doomenloom, and our 9th shiny Omnisect that can come straight out of Mob Psycho if I didn't know better. We only need one more to cross off our very first challenge, and I'm hoping for something good. But this does mean we have to head to Celadon City first, but on our way there I got 
sidetracked once more. Only this time it led me to an old abandoned clinic that I thought was just a Pokemon Center. In here we find some very peculiar Pokemon like a Viragon, I hope this thing hasn't spread a virus around, but also Medical with a Plague Doctor mask, and Metroidchi who's ready to slurp your brain like it's a smoothie. But it only gets worse from here because in the deepest parts of the clinic we find a Bioxis. A literal legendary Pokemon is in here, and its DNA seems to be altered a ton from the regular Deoxys. Before all the things here take over the world in an apocalypse, I am going to take this thing down. And with taking it down, I mean lob balls at its face until it gets annoyed and decides to join me. With one of the strongest Pokemon in existence by our side, I go back outside and start terrorizing the wildlife, allowing me to capture a Cannonbell in its prevolution, as well as a Smoglu and a Mitrador. In Celadon City, we have a ton of stuff to buy and that's mainly the evolution stones. With those, we evolve Pikachu into Raikul, Mandiwurl into Spirit Toad, Iolithe into Io9 and it gets a horn which I guess it shoots lightning out of, but also Cannonbell into Artillibel and somehow our Bible also evolves. It doesn't end there though because Starow also turns into Starite and I don't know why but I really don't like the Manic Tree evolution. It's a fire grass type but I just don't end up liking it all that much. But now our team is absolutely powered up to take on Erika with a Pokedex total of 142 and a time of 32 hours and 56 minutes. She has the cutest thing ever, just look at this Latticeire and tell me you don't want this as like a pillow or as a stone thing for in your garden because I just want to hug it. Hariyamos on the other hand needs to stay away from me. We do take out the cutie patootie first to swap it out for a shiny Doom and Loom. I bring in Mecha and easily take down the Hariyama thing. My Lotus's creepy eyes stare right into my soul. But even so, I still took it out with a Sludge Bomb just like the Nyx Pokemon, but all of a sudden the game turned into Plants vs Zombies as we saw a repeat bell shooting peas our way. But we eat up those peas with Crunch and then finish off Doom and Loom and grab our fourth badge. Normally I would just go and take on Giovanni right now, but I actually forgot and instead captured a couple more Pokemon like Command Time, the cool trappage that looks like a bike, and an even bigger toy horse. Then we went to the game corner to do some underage gambling and spinning, and after blasting into Giovanni's room, it was time to take out the Mafia. But for a boss, he was pretty weak as Fleon took out the first two Pokemon with Seed Bombs, and Artillobel was able to take down Drill Drio with Fire Spin. But then, he brought on the, the biggest abomination of all time, Amalga Form. A mashup of all the Pokemon and I kind of love what they did with Cast Form here. It's also got the mystery typing and copies your ability. So if it traces Wonder Guard off of you, you have no more things to kill it with. Luckily that didn't happen here because our very own legendary Poison jabbed it until Giovanni dropped the Sylph's go. On our way to the Pokemon Tower, we evolved our Paragoomer into an entire Mario stage, also get Sharpizo and Volbat and then drive away on our bike. Inside of the Pokemon Tower, we ended up fighting the Spirit of Bladowak, a fighting dragon type, and after sending it back to the afterlife, we grabbed ourselves some spooky boys. Ugnaut, Kadabra who is ready to shank ya, my Kaber, a Pleadal, and two K Ralts. And all the way at the top, I finally run into my 10th shiny Whitening. And I'm really happy with this thing because it actually really looks like Lightning once it will evolve into Pelistorm. And on top of that, I just really like the design. With our first challenge done, it's time to take on the next one. Agatha is now part of Team Rocket and here to try and stop me. But I'm not letting her lay a finger on Mr. Fuji. She had a pretty decent team, but honestly, the two most terrifying things were by far Cramperd and Snore Shoot. <laughs> I mean, it was holding me at gunpoint for like 10 minutes straight, so I had to fly it out of here with Goomgar while Empom finished off the last Pokemon with Thunder Punches. We chased Agatha out of the building, which was not too hard with her walking stick, and save Mr. Fuji. With that, we can head straight to Sylphco and don't mess around at all. I also ended up evolving Garyl into Vugaril, and this thing just reminds me of that one boss in Persona 5. But the battles don't end and here, we defeat every single Rocket Grunt and go to the top floor to beat up our rival too. Volbat ends up taking out Septicago, Sharpizo buries Artillabel, Goomgar takes out the Sudowoodo and Grass Toys. Cherry Pick is also a mod that has no weaknesses and is super strong so 
I have to bring out Volgaril after it meter mashes me, so I can eventually burn it with flamethrower and take it out. He points me into the direction of Giovanni and we head over there. We tell him that he must stop trying to gather more balls, because no matter how many balls he gets, he's never going to be loved if he doesn't change his ways. Ampom just punches the first Pokemon with the thunder while Goomgar flies away the snake. Charpizo ends up laying an entire network of wires and Maul Venus gets burned by Volgarill. Drill Drio gets melted and the final Pokemon is once again a Malga form. We punch him a couple more times with the thunder and that stops Giovanni's obsession with balls. And in return, the director gives us our very own Master Ball. With that, we can go and take on Sabrina, but first we evolve the Whitening into Pelistorm, and our Wonder Guard boy doesn't only become smaller, he also becomes way stronger after evolving. As it turns out, only two of my Pokemon can take down three of hers, Haonami, which is an incredible name by the way. Zenchamp and Ledistort, they all fell to Night Slashes and Signal Beams from Spiritoad and Sickler. But then that stupid Omori had to shockwave me out of here and had to bring in Pelistorm. Solnova, on the other hand, was a little bit hard to deal with, I was not sure what its typing was, but I think it's part steel. They then took out Pelistorm with no effort at all. So after bringing out the most overpowered Pokemon of all time, we could just finish off all three of the remaining Pokemon with crunches and shadow balls, and let's hope Sabrina will never trap people in that dollhouse ever again. We then went to the beach but got harassed by pirates and mermaids. One of the pirates even turns out to be a shiny one, so we just capture that and end up adding it to the team. We end up leaving that godforsaken place and capture a Snorlaps instead. We pick up the Super Rod and capture a Ducheco, but we also end up with the Condon Toy. The Fighting Dojo is now on this route as well, and if you want to fight Koga, you have to become a martial artist yourself. And here you don't just have to beat up a Karate Master, no, you actually have to fight Bruno, the strongest fighting type leader ever. I mean, he had some pretty strong and powerful Pokemon, we're under Banatir, Mistando, Bracion, and Shudowudo, but I shocked most of them out of the air with Pelistorm. And what happens when you beat him? Well, you get the choice between Kung Fudo and Mr. Crime. I decided to grab Mr. Crime and go on my merry way to capture some more Pokemon like Roselith. We also found a Pegasigep and a Glee Pet and a couple more IVs in case we need some more evolutions of them. And indeed, I needed a couple. I evolved it into Molteon, a bug type, and into the flying type Zephyrion. But that's not even the coolest stuff. Terragross and Binafi were absolutely beautiful and ready to burge through anything that would come in my path but also Catavore the Mummy. With these, I knew it was time to take on Poison-type Master Koga. He had some of the best Pokemon I've ever seen, Fibrulo, Epidemoir. With tears in my eyes, I had to take out the Hothead, and then Glimpale showed its face, and I was sold. I knew its pre-evolution was badass, but this guy can come and chill with me anytime. Eventually, I just had to bring in my Terracross and take down everything on his team with Earthquakes and Rock Slides. Even Dr. Nefario couldn't do anything with his fart machine. Now we head to the Safari Zone, where we have to get like 30 encounters, we get a Thundersa here, as well as the Chica Ride, a Shiny Ivy, which is number 12, but also a Torice, which was pretty nice, and also a Ryling, Explodile, another Shiny, this time Thundersa, which brings us up to 13, and he told me to join my Discord if you haven't already, so who am I to say no? We also find Flame Ape, a Tough Kip, which is a very strong, a Side Chick, but also a Cool Caddy with the best glasses you'll ever see. Techleon used its color change too much and started rusting, but luckily Chan C was there to heal it up. We also end up finding a horsey with legs and a pixie nair. I then tracked back all the way to Palatown because there was another patch of grass there that required my investigation skills. Here we found a mermaid that still looked as ugly as its regular form, but also the ultimate question mark and explanation mark that led me to Avatar Aang as well as Dunspiller. On our way to Cinnabar Island, I grab a shower and the gun, but also Aqua Rear and Liquitang. Once I reached Cinnabar Island, I fished up a Chili Carp and a Flaridose, and I love both of these guys' designs. The color scheme just goes so hard. Before going to the abandoned mansion, I check out the cold and harsh environment of the Seafoam Islands where I find a shiny Torkold that brings our capture total up to 14 already. In here, we also grab a Stalagmite and an Omnar. The last thing I grab here is a Fridge Auto, then we go to Cinnabar Island again, and enter the abandoned mansion to grab a torture machine that looks a little bit like a pincer, but also a Mekins, Yugduk, Eradicate, Slug, and the best of all, a Mulgaform. 
I also had to evolve my liquid song into liquid licky. Believe me, I didn't want to do it either. Look at this ugly thing, but don't worry, we're trading it away immediately for a beautiful and epic Hydro O named Paul, which is just comedy gold. And just before we fight Blaine, we have to build an entire new team. So we get Suave, who can swallow you whole, Swash Bull 2, but also Omultar, Kavali, and Pash Bro. We become a quiz master and save up just in front of him to see that we have 6 badges, 235 Pokemon captured, but also 57 hours already played. We're over halfway there on both our time and Pokedex, so this might actually turn out to be great. Blaine here starts off with a Mukma and a Yanhuo Send, which just looks like a curse from Jujutsu Kaisen. And Mukma can become a very bad Ligma joke. So we end up just taking it out with Earthquake, and then Batalari comes in, the third evolution of Octillery. We Earthquake and Earth Power to take both of these two down too, and Rose Leech and Explobat decide to show their faces. And these two outspeed and kill both of my team members, so Pashbro and Swashbill come in. And Pashbro just stone edges it, and the next Pokemon, and the next one to take all three of them out. So guess what? Seven gym badges acquired, only one more to go, but we can't just head over to Giovanni immediately. Bill needs our help with something on the Sevi Island, so we have to head over there with him. We get introduced to big boy Celio. No, not the walrus Pokemon. No, this guy, although he looks like him a little bit. They hand me the meteorite and the tripass to see if we can help them power this machine. Little do they know that I'm not here to help them yet. We're here to do some selfish stuff first and capture all the Pokemon around. And maybe chill in a hot tub here and there. I end up finding a Talamence here, which is definitely not as cool as the regular Salamence. But I also ended up capturing a Semorant just before heading to Mount Ember, where I wanted to go and capture Moltres, but like always, I forgot to pick up DHM for strength. Why do I keep doing this to myself? That when we got a call from the second island that their little daughter was kidnapped by someone. But before we go and save her, I had to grab some more Pokemon like Geyserupt, Heraptos, Eblis. There is also a teeny tiny new area here called Cabring that's full of Mellow Slayers. I just hope that they leave Melon Lord alone. Every time you capture one of these, they will give you a Gunstone, and Gunstones can be used to evolve a specific few Pokemon and turn them into pseudo-legendaries with base stats totals of 600. A couple of these have already been shown to you inside the gyms, but these are by far the strongest and coolest mods in this version of Alter Red. Speaking of these gun evolutions, you can capture a couple of them on the third island where you can normally find Dunsparce, but do keep in mind that these catch rates are absolutely insane. I was still able to get a couple like Ledistort, Mistando, and Batalari. Inside the water, we grabbed a Smouch and a Cloundred, but the worst thing of all was Kiss Cash. I don't want this thing's lips near my face, and neither should you. So we ran away from it and evolved our Frigiato into Frigiot. I honestly wish this thing was just a fridge with wings. Just before we could save the little girl, we actually had to defeat Expert Tucker, which was honestly really easy. It did have a Gunstone evolution in Festivit, but also a Pixie Knight and a Bioxis. After wiping the floor with it, we defeat the Hypnoplasm, or rather capture it, and this girl must be scarred for life because it is way scarier than a regular Hypno. We bring her back home, hoping she'll sleep for the last couple of nights. We deliver the meteorite, the father is super happy, and we go back to Island 1, because Celio and Bill are done working on the machine, and we can head back to Cinnabar City to evolve our Pinico into an Impactress and trade that away for a beautiful Tiktonia that looks straight out of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. This is just Shadow Lugia with a different typing. And considering that's my favorite Pokemon game, I will absolutely take it. Just before we take on Giovanni, I evolved Condentoy, Morizard, Rapiduz, and Saigon. With these beautiful monstrosities, I went to Giovanni and he starts out with an Ujada Lord and I am glad I have a Flaridos on my team, because we can just one-shot that wonder-guarding specimen. He brings in Rhyrano and explodes with his Frightening, not even killing anything, although the next turn they do manage to take out my Flaridos, so I bring in Sizzlor and also take in the incoming Pashlord with Hydro Pump from Eblis. As he brings 
using Pegasus Gip, I bring in Saigon and Amalga form. I use Extreme Speed and Super Glitch, which is a 250 base power question mark type move that hits like a truck. But it only has one PP. That's the downside. You can also freeze, paralyze, burn, and put your opponent to sleep randomly, which is great. But these two get absolutely destroyed, and the last Pokemon, Mellow Slayer, fell shortly after to an Extreme Speed and a Secret Power. Last gym badge acquired, and Giovanni finally disbands Team Rocket, so without any more distractions, we can head to the Pokemon League, right? Nope, we have to fight our rival first. And Eblis is super overpowered, as it takes on the first three Pokemon with extra sensories and hydro pumps, and one of them was a missing no. The strongest Pokemon in the game, so that just tells you how strong this thing really is. Flaridos burned up grass toys and frightening, while Amalgaform finished off Party Crash with a super glitch to win myself another rival battle. Before going to Victory Road, I finally pick up the HM for strength from the old man, and upon entering I see that it's been totally changed around, which is absolutely amazing because I'm sick of Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green's Victory Road, to be honest. This is very refreshing. In here we end up with a Bladoak, a shiny Femurcon, which is our 15th shiny, but also the gross Cramper that is just the Halloween Pokemon. And the 16th shiny as well, Nobot Dinja, another question mark type. This time it doesn't have Wonder Gout, however. It is still really useful, so I'm probably going to be taking this into the Elite Four with me. And of course, there is also its counterpart, Heartlesk. But there is one more Roadblock before the Elite Four, and that is the Boss Trainer Spencer. I mean, he did have a Blissian, a Beast Fearly, don't know what this thing is supposed to be, but I love it. But besides those two, we basically just one shot at everything else on his team, so we can move on to the very first Elite Four member, Lorelei. I started out with Terra and Diomar against Kelva Pass and Torkoal. I just spam Eruption and Moonblast until the turtle dies. I killed the Mist Magius with Stone Edge and got a critical hit Moonblast on the incoming Freeze Ult. I also ended up Stone Edging Kelvin Pass and Freeze Ult went down the same way. Now the last two were Goopras and Fragator. I Moonblasted one last time before getting taken out by Burn Damage and I then swap into my Amplipalm. I just used Thunder Punch, Overclock, and Stone Edge to finish these last two off and moved on to not Bruno this time. He's still stuck in the fighting dojo, but Noland. I started out with Amplipom and Diomar and went for Super Glitch and Overclock to immediately wipe both of his Pokemon out. He definitely seems to be specializing in the Steel type. He brings out Tiffision and Glacier. Glacier is an easy one shot with Overclock, but Diomar decays away by a Sludge Bomb. So I send in Injama Lord and Terragross to just Earthquake everything this guy has. I knew it was all going to be Steel. We blast him into the ground and bury him between layers and layers of Earth. Since Ag that joined Team Rocket, her spot has been filled by Brandon. And he specializes in ground, a very scary typing definitely for the Pokemon I sent out, like Amplipom. I end up bringing Ujadalord because I thought nothing on his team could touch me. That's where Avatar Aang just whips up a gust of wind and takes me out. Eventually we're able to take the crab down, but then all of our team members start falling like flies when Kvili comes in. Until I bring out the monstrosity himself, Amalga form. I'm then able to take down a couple of Pokemon with secret power and super glitch, but in the end both of my Pokemon go down and I'm only left with Terra, but somehow these guys can barely do any damage to me. So I end up recovering and setting up Calmites until I'm at plus 6 and then I just eruption away until every single one of his team members is dead and we still come out victorious at the skin of our teeth. Onto the last Elite 4 member, Lance. And his team seems to be made up out of just the coolest Pokemon in the game. Starting out with Flaridose and Four Star. And while I'm only able to get off a Rock Slide before Terragross already gets taken out by Seed Bomb, I bring in Diomar to Moonblast the Flaridos out of here, but then Skelegron is out next. Diomar ends up trading with Four Star after the Sandstorm damage kicks in, and I then double up on Skelegron with Amplipalm and Terra, and those two hits are just too much for it. I mean, there's a reason this thing's a skeleton. The next two members are Malawak and Thunderius. So we Iron Tail and Secret Power to send it back to the Shadow Realm and bring out the final Pokemon. Come on, Erodo. 
And after spamming Crunch and Secret Power for a couple turns, we win this one as well. On to the champion, and he has a very interesting team of only question mark type Pokemon. So no weaknesses for him. He starts out with a Viragon GP and a Cherry Pick. And now I'm certain that this Viragon is actually a virus. Let's just hope it doesn't infect my PC. On the first turn, I swap out Terra for Ujada Lord and go for the Earthquake with Terra Gross. This ends up killing the virus and brings out in Trio Bang. I swap in Terra again and I'm only able to hit one more eruption and Terra Gross isn't able to do anything anymore because it gets stuck in its paralysis. I do take out the question mark with Ampli Pumps overclock the turn after, and then he sends out his very own Amalgaform. Super Glyph from Diomar does amazing damage on Cherry Pick and freezes it, but also finishes off Amalgaform. Missing No comes out, and just when I get it back into red health, they heal both of their Pokemon up. So Ampli Pump ends up going down, I bring in Ujada Lord, and use Tri Attack and Lunch to take out Cherry Pick, and the last team member he has is L Dragon. I don't know why, but this thing calls the Dragonborn deep within my soul all the way to the surface. But it absolutely doesn't matter because they can't hit Ujada Lord anymore. We lunge away that missing no and spam crunch on that L Dragon until we get that sweet, sweet critical hit. Professor Oak is once again disappointed in his grandson and off of his loss, we triumph as we put our super overpowered team into the Hall of Fame at 75 hours and 52 minutes of playtime. But this is not where our journey ends. We have a lot more Pokemon to capture, an entire pose game to complete, a Pokemon to get to level 100, and a League to take down once again once we're done with all of that. First we go to the Professor's Lab who's going to upgrade my Pokedex, even though it's already the National Dex basically. Then I take the bug back to one island and go back to Mount Ember where I beat up some Team Magma Grunts. I then go to the deepest part of the mountain to pick up the Ruby and grab all the fire types I missed the first time around. I start ascending the mountain and see a legendary bird standing there, but he turns into a Reggie Hue, and after not being able to capture it, it eventually turned into a shiny. And I love that the colors are just inverted, it looks so dumb and stupid, but I think it's honestly really clever. I head back to Celio to give him the ruby, and as a reward, he upgrades my pass so I can now visit all seven islands. On island number four, we run into Ogius, and he says that there is breeding going on here. Luckily, we don't have to do anything like that for ourselves because all the Pokemon are available in the wild. I head to the Icefall Cave and guess what I found here? More ice types. I licked away a jump bluff and cracked some nuts with Nutcrack. Outside of the cave I fished up a couple tops and that was everything I could do here so I headed to the fifth island and grabbed all the Pokemon just outside of the rocket base and then went to the guy with the egg to pick that up as well just in case something special's in there. I then head into the lost cave to grab all of the Hitmon brothers and obviously they get lost in there for for five hours, and once I'm free from the shackles of the cave, I head to the sixth island to grab a bunch of really cool Pokemon like Rhyrano, Exeggihord, and Four Star. We then turn into the Fire Lord and also fight Avatar Aang before running into the scientist that's blocking our way. So I decided to check out the top of the islands where we find a Parasy, and if this thing tried to suck my blood, I'd just smack it like any other bug. We headed over to Altering Cave where you could find all three of the Regis so you don't even have to go to their locations in the power plant and stuff. You can just capture them here, so that's what I do. I managed to get Regi Static and Regi Deep. Oh, and my egg also hatched into Ebi, which I didn't have yet, so I'll take it. On to island number seven, and the Battle Tower is actually totally gone. There is now a grass patch here where you can find a ton of Gunstone Evolutions. I was able to catch Naren Haze, Snorshoot, and Repeat Bell. I checked out the rest of the island and then ended up finding a plasmar, a puzzle to complete, and some old ruins that were surrounded by Chetulios, its pre-evolution, and also Blissies. Inside the ruins themselves, I found Pew Pew, a bullet of some kind, and with that, I could break into the interior of the ice cave where I helped out Lorelei battling off some Team Rocket Grunts. We sweep them off their feet and let them slide out of the cave while Lorelei thanks us for helping out. Now, she can finally go back to her job as a Elite Four member, but we also also do some more capturing here, a shell cut tree, as well as a bowl filled with cola. 
This also unlocks the dotted hole for us, so we fall through a couple of floor plates. And just before we can pick up the sapphire, the scientist snatches it in front of us and brings it to the Team Rocket hideout. So we spin our way through and challenge him to get the sapphire back so Celio can finish his device. I would say this was a hard battle if not for Amplipom because he one-shot every single thing that he threw at me. Also, why does he look like Sydney? We steal our sapphire back, bring it to Celio and complete the pose game. This means we can go and challenge the league, but we also have a couple of places to check out where we haven't been before, like the power plant where we grab a ton of electric type Pokemon, and Cerulean Cave, home of Eldragon, and seemingly all of the starter Pokemon. Oh yeah, and we can also capture a substitute here, so we finally have that little guy on our team too. Mewtwo is just a total goner, a bee goner to be exact, and even though our genetic friend is not here anymore, we still capture the bee and go back to the Pokemon League to challenge them once again. But this time I'll only be showing the rifle fight at the end because it's changed up quite a bit. Starting out with an Eldrag against my newly acquired Tifision. I set up three nasty plots and just kill it with a critical hit Caustic Fume, a 100 base power steel type special move. I also one shot Fridgeot but Grass Toys is able to drain punch me and take me out. I send out Ujadalor to lunge the Grass Turtle, that's not Torterra, and then kill Beegon with a critical hit Crunch the turn after. Plasmortar gets crunched two times in a row and the last Pokemon. His name is Boom Boom. Despite looking like a fire type, it didn't have any fire type moves to hit me, so two more crunches and Ujada Lord wins me the champion battle for the second time, which means we can cross off that pesky challenge too. We're 92 hours in and we still have to complete our Pokedex and get a Pokemon to level 100. I have no idea if we're going to be able to complete this, but I know we can at least get a Pokemon to level 100, so I grabbed Ampiplom and went to the nearest Pokemon Center to grind up on Substitute until he reached level 100. 100. This stranded us at 95 hours in a Pokedex total of 304. We still need like 80 Pokemon in 5 hours. So anyway, I started evolving and running around the region like a madman to capture everything I didn't find yet. Most of them were Gunstone evolutions, so I had to grab a couple more Mellow Slayers. But in the end, I was just left with one more Pokemon to capture. I headed over to the infamous spot on Cinnabar Island where Gen 1 people managed to find it for the very first time. That's right, we're going to be capturing the almighty Missing No. He didn't want to show up for a little while, but then my game started glitching and I finally encountered him. I lobbed my Ultra Ball and captured the strongest Pokemon of all time to complete my Pokedex. And I then went to Professor Oak to show him my progress in my Pokedex and I have finally completed it all. But was it all in the time limit? No way. It took me over 120 hours to get all of these Pokemon. All the grinding and capturing took way longer than 5 hours. But I'm still incredibly happy that I managed to finish this alternate dimensions Pokedex. And I do hope you guys enjoy it as well. I also did just find out that this was a dated version of Altered. The newest one adds a couple couple of new Pokemon and updated sprites, so if you want to see all of those, you can always check out the game for yourself. And as for Altered itself, I absolutely enjoyed this game to the fullest. I'm a little bit sad that most of the boss battles are double battles, which I'm not a big fan of, but that's of course going to be personal preference. For what it is, I'm going to give Altered a 9 out of 10. And with that out of the way, I want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. It is always appreciated, but not needed. And as always, people, don't forget forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you all next time.